the book, so it won't matter. But uh, I went to fucking Best Buy. Oh, I'm recording. The microphone. Yeah. And, and like, the fucking guy there is totally fucking unhelpful and doesn't know what he's talking about. He's all like, I'm like, uh, I was like, oh hey, I need a uh, a camera to uh, record audio. Or, or not a camera. I go, I need a microphone to record audio with. He's like, oh, to record with? I'm like, yes. And. He's like, well, all we have are these gaming headsets, but they're not very good because they're open channel, my, my, and the sound quality's not great. I'm like, uh, do you just have, like, a microphone that plugs into the computer that I could use with, like, you know, an audio program to record audio? We don't have anything like that. I recommend you buy the Yeti, uh, and, and you can get it online for, like, $150. I use it for my podcast. Mm. And, and, and you gotta make sure sound quality is real good. Now don't use Audacity because that program is really iffy. Mm. And fucking it's saying how apparently uh, if you don't buy this one hundred fifty dollar fucking microphone that you have to buy like padding to put around the microphone and <laughs> to keep it from clipping and sounding like shit because apparently uh, wh what does this guy know? I mean, literally, you know the, the microphone you have? Yeah. I just need something, well, something like that. They don't even, I don't, I don't think they do have them there. Yeah. But, like, his, his solution is to buy a $150 piece of equipment when, like, what you have can't be more than, like, maybe $20. Oh, gosh, mine wasn't even 5 Again. Where did you get yours at? I had to order mine online. It was only, like, 3 something Well, fuck, that's even better, like... Um, do you, do you say there might be one at Walmart? Uh, they got headsets there, but, um... I want one like yours, because, like, that, that works pr pretty well. Well, it's just... Yeah, no, like, I mean, it's not bad for just something easy. Well, I mean, the sound quality's... I, I mean, fuck, that's good enough for what I'm going to be doing with it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's better stuff, but then, you know, I mean, really, for three bucks, I mean, this is a pretty good microphone for three bucks. Yeah, and not to mention, it's not 150 fucking dollars. And it, it really pissed me off that just, like, what the fuck? And, and did did like, you try mmm, Radio Shack? Like, yeah, okay, thanks for fucking solving my goddamn problem. Did you try Radio Shack? No, it was fucking Best Buy. And he was like a total poop face. Like, it wasn't rude, but it was so stupid. Like, like the solution, he didn't even try saying, like, oh, you know, you can order, you know, blah, 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 or such and such. It's literally, he's, like, telling me to spend money on something expensive. Like, like a typical fucking sales rep will be anywhere. It's always about them getting the most, well, not necessarily even them, but it's always about money. Yeah. It's like, why not just be like, hey man, you should go online and blah blah blah, and you can get them for such and such, and they're not very expensive. But, yeah, he's like, the cheapest headset we have is $40. I'm like, fuck that. I'm fucking stupid. Um, try Radio Shack. They, they're they bound to have something. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'll look there and at Walmart, uh, but if I can't find something, I'm just gonna have you order it, and I'll pay you the, the $3 or whatever. Okay. Or shipping or whatever you want. It's just a, a simple microphone. Okay, um, so I'm recording and uh so dude, okay, this uh, this 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 book called uh The Manipulative Man that you said you saw out there by Dorothy McCoy, who's I'm sure a bigot. And I'm gonna read what it says here. And uh it says um Convention, it's a book description, and it says, Conventional wisdom says that women are the manipulative ones, but tell that to the thousands of desperate women suffering at the hands of a manipulative man. Oh my god. Men can be just as sneaky, passive-aggressive, needy, underhanded, whiny, guilt-inducing, and emotionally demanding as women are accused of being. Oh, wow. Y yeah. Okay, and perhaps more so. As this is what, fucking god damn it. This pisses me off because I realize that the reason why they don't have, you know, the manipulated man there is because they, if they even knew what it was, for one thing, they probably wouldn't put it there because they would assume that it wouldn't, you know, be sold very much. 
Yeah. They only had one copy of the manipulative man, but it's like just the fact that it, it that it's there makes me mad because I mean not only is it every time I go to the bookstore to get a book I want, it's never there. It, it literally almost every book that I ever want to to get, I have to order myself, or I will randomly find in a place like the Goodwill. Yeah, and then, well, like, look at all, for example, look at all the Microsoft Windows books there, and then and then there's only, literally only one Linux book. I mean, it was a good book about the command prompt and all that, but, like, the fact that out of, you know, it's like, it's like 35% of the books that they got there cater to uh, Mac, or, or maybe 20% cater to Mac, and then... About like fifty percent counter, or, or they they cater to uh, Windows related stuff. And then some are kind of neutral, like they're just about web design or whatever. And there's only one book about Linux. Yeah, well, it's, and it's the same phenomenon where it's like, oh, here's a book about how men are bad, but is there a, is there a book that says the same about women? I mean, that'd be equal, right? If there was a book, I mean, yeah. a person should be able to go in there and get both sides of an argument, say that ooh, maybe they're writing a paper on something, and they need information on both sides. Like, it's like, yeah, you can argue, well, you order it online, or, you know, do the research online. It's like, the fact that they have that bigotry in the store. Yeah, already ready. Like, they don't, you don't even have to order it. It's already there. Yeah, you don't have to even, like, whenever you ask for it, like when I asked the guy for, and I was, I, I said the manipulated man, and he just said, yeah, manipulated man, and like he was a black guy, and uh, he was he's really nice and all, and helpful, and I was like, oh fuck yeah, they got the book, and I went back there and I didn't fucking have it, well, you know, they had the goddamn blah blah poop mouth McCoy, her book, her mind comps. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was such a disappointment because it, it, I was already disappointed because they didn't have the book, but two, I was disappointed because like they have this book, but they don't have the other one. Yep. Uh, did you check to see if they got propaganda up there by Edward Bernays? No, actually, I was about to, and I didn't. I was I was walking through there, and I was going to ask, but I was uh, I basically didn't have money. To I had money, but I didn't want to spend it on too much. Like, fucking, I ended up goddamn broke anyway because fucking all the goddamn shit. But, like, I didn't buy much up there, and I don't know where all my money went. Um, I know I bought, like, some lunch, and I bought, like, uh, the most expensive thing I bought was $30. It was a DVD, uh, like a season of a show, and that was $30, but, like, everything else I got was, like, small. Anyway... I bought one book at the store that was thirteen dollars, and I didn't look for the um, propaganda because I didn't want to. I wasn't gonna get it today anyway, even if I would have found it. Because mm -hmm. uh, I was also thinking about looking at the to see uh, how how cheap their copy of nineteen eighty four would be. Yeah. Because mine is literally from nineteen eighty four. Like my book is is from that year. That's how old the issue is. Yeah. Issuing of it is. And it's falling to fucking pieces, and uh, I wanted to get a new one because obviously that's a good book. But uh, I mean, the main, literally the main things I went in there for were Roadside Picnic and The Manipulated Man because I have the ebook. I haven't read it because I, I hate, I can't stand it. You have an e-reader, so you know, whatever you can read it, but I don't. And I don't want to sit at my computer and read it like it's uncomfortable after a while. Oh yeah, yeah. So and, and I I like having books in print anyway, um, because it's so much more convenient to like you know like if you find something you like you can easily mark the page and like flip back to it. I'm sure you can do that on area or somehow, but yeah, well, it's convenience <laughs> of having the book. But I should have known better than to to think that they would have it because every other time I've been there they they haven't had it. So why would they suddenly have it? <laughs> yeah. But I know what you mean, because I went into the, um, I was looking, then I was looking for, like, a book, uh, I was looking for a book, uh, on, like, uh, Lucid Dreaming. I was going to see if they had, like, a Lucid Dream for Dummies, because 
they, the, the way things are fucking organized there are kind of retarded. Like, I don't know. It, it's hard to explain, but it's like I was looking in the area I thought it would be. didn't find anything. I even looked in the New Age section, which doesn't really make sense why it would be there, but it seemed, uh, it seemed more relevant than fucking business or, you know, politics. <laughs> so... Anyway, I didn't, I didn't find, like, anything except for I found a, uh, a fucking something uh, drawn by a guy whose art I like, so I got that, and, yeah. But, All right, dude. I, I was, I was, I don't know, I got my hopes up thinking that I could actually purchase a book in a bookstore, but no, it looks like we have to fucking order online, which isn't going to happen anytime soon, because I don't really have any income. Well, um... Propaganda by Edward Bernays this like four years ago was fairly easy to find and like most of the time it was under ten bucks. Yeah. Uh I think I paid like eight dollars and something for mine, but I got it like the month that they reprinted it or the month after they reprinted it. Yeah. I think you'd only pay like maybe fifteen bucks for it at the most. It just depends on you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So, like, an average of 10, which I thought was good, because it is a really good book of his. I read it from cover to cover once already. Well, yeah, um, when I found The Manipulative Man, mm -hmm. it was in a section on relationships, so you can imagine what it was surrounded by. Mm -hmm. Poop mouth books. Like, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't noticeable. They, like, okay, The Manipulative Man, that's pretty fucking, I mean, you can just tell by reading the title what that's going to be about. Yeah. But, um... There were other books that, you know, appeal to these people. You know, they can read about how it's really hard. Where am I? Good man, God. And it's like, uh, well, it's like, um, fucking, goddamn, I don't even remember. Is it John the Other who said that? You know, yeah, the, it that was. Video? Yeah. No, that's a voice for me, wasn't it? Uh, John the like, Other is the guy. Well, they've been in the same place for the entire time. And, uh, so anyway... Uh, I just don't... You know what? I don't want to fucking hear this goddamn bitching about where the, where the good men have gone. It's all these, these poop mouths that have turned down these good men, and then, then later they want one and can't get one, and then they start bitching and whining to everyone else to help them. Where are all the good men gone? You know what, bitch? You, you know what? You don't even... You don't even need to know. You're looking at, uh... Ten dollars and seventeen cents for a paperback of uh, of propaganda by Edward Bernays, um, and then some sellers are having it for like eight dollars and some odd. Oh, and guess what I just saw? Something I've been wanting, and it was out of print for decades, which means it was so expensive. It was like the like the cheapest. You know, the cheapest print of it I could find a few years ago was like 300 and some odd dollars. Yeah, what is it? Crystallizing Public Opinion. By and who? Edward Bernays. Damn. Now, now, good. now, here's the thing. Propaganda was the book he was really, really known for. Yeah. But his book titled, uh, his book of the title Crystallizing Public Opinion was so powerful that that's the book that Joseph Goebbels had and used for his propaganda campaign and Bernays was disturbed to find that out. Yeah. Yep. That's some beaks. Yep, and uh, so anyway, dude, uh, I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, I'm still here. You can still hear me, right? Yeah. I, uh, just, all right, just had to switch helicopters. And, uh, yeah, speaking of that, Leslie bought one for oh, Elliot one? for Christmas, and it's like, he doesn't know about it, obviously, but uh, I don't know if it's the same brand as yours, like, I think it's, it looks visually similar, but I don't know, if I think it might be like a generic one. Oh, yeah? But uh, it's basically that yellow one, the little one. Uh, but crystallizing public opinion, it's around $10. I'll probably eventually get it, but uh, it was so powerful that Joseph Goebbels used that book and developed his techniques based on that book. And Edward Bernays was was frightened. He seemed like it disturbed him to find out that that um, 
that Joseph Goebbels... He's not doing anything wrong, right? What? Oh, yeah, because Edward Bernays, he's innocent, and, you know, he's not doing anything fucked up and, and evil. Well, like, Bernays just mostly used those techniques to get money, and that was his, yeah, but, his motive. But would you not consider what he's done evil? Well, uh, yeah, he is was, a prick. It was intended. Yeah, uh, uh, Bernays is a prick. I mean, he's he's a genius, but he's he's a prick. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually get it. Uh, now Walter Lippmann was a colleague of. Um, There's actually this new book at uh, the uh, fucking uh, oh man that book's a million or whatever. Hey, wait! I tell you what, dude. It was. It was uh, I think it was by a feminist. It was called uh, Mein Kampf or whatever. Hmm. Oh yeah, well, dude. Yeah. Guess what? If you want to get propaganda sometime, when you got some money, tell me and I'll order crystallizing public opinion and propaganda. Yeah. Because I can order propaganda for you and then get crystallizing public opinion for myself. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I was gonna. You know, I'm still. Waiting to hear back from fan video, but uh, guess what? What's that? They hired another woman. Imagine that. And you know, I was I was complaining in the car on the way back uh, from the mall about it because it's like, okay, let's hire another woman. Uh, like I was complaining about how the fact that almost everywhere you go, if anyone you know that involves the company interacting with the customer, mm -hmm. they want a woman to be the buffer, you know? Now keep in mind... a woman in the situation where they will be the first ones to deal with an angry customer or a customer in general. Now keep in mind that, that like, this is still recording because we're going to talk about that one book and then we'll put this on the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. Because, you know, apparently women are non-threatening, they're not volatile, and, and, and everyone will feel safe and secure if a woman is buying a fucking cash register. My God, like, it's a cash, it's a, it's a cashier job. It's not like a national security rise in the balance. Why can't a guy <laughs> goddamn do it every once in a while? That's true. I mean, shit. And it's literally completely, it's completely mis, mis fucking aligned and, and unbalanced because I don't know who runs the show around there. I'm pretty sure the dude does. Like the guy's there. I guess he's a manager. He he, he has like the 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 um, attitude of a manager. I uh -huh. guess because he does whatever the fuck he wants to. But um, he's hiring all these chicks that are around my age to work at the store because that blonde chick that works there, I, I assumed she was older, um, but she, I, I walked in there today and she proved a point, uh, but at the same time I learned how old she was because she's like talking to this woman that was in there about how, she's like, <coughs> one of my favorite Christmas foods is uh, the Santa Claus foods with Tim Allen in them. My, those came out when, when I was young and I'm almost 21 now, my, my. It's like, okay, so one of your favorite movies is the fucking Santa Claus with Tim Allen, and you work at a video store. Hmm. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm just, maybe, maybe people call me a prick for being like, oh, you know, everyone's going to work to, you know, the Santa Claus is a movie. It's like, yeah, you know, it is a movie, but, uh, it's generally not thought of as one of the fucking must-sees of, of, you know, cinema. I uh I found oh, I found a microphone for you. Yeah, how much? Uh, well, let me ask you a question. How how long of a cord do you need for a microphone? Not very long, like probably uh, ten inches would be good. A foot long would be ideal. This one looks like it's around six to eight inches long, and it that is. That probably work. I can plug it in the back. Um. Yeah, this one you probably want to plug in the front. Well, what would be the difference? Because because the cord is that short on it. Yeah, but either way, front or back, it's about the same distance. And I don't think the cord's that long. What's your point? Um, well, I mean, I mean to record whatever, uh, it's like two and a half dollars. Two and a half. Yeah, and well, one place has it for like three dollars thirty-four cents, 
one place has it for uh, one one seller on Amazon has it for one penny. Well, but worst case scenario, I have a fucking USB extension, and that shouldn't affect it. I don't think. Okay. Um, but I this mean, plugs I in. can just plug it in the front and put it over on the left side of my power. But that's where my mouth is, so um, I might need to use that extension. Well, this like you can like. One seller has it priced at a penny, but then you gotta pay three dollars for shipping. Yeah. And uh, now, now that's on that cable, and I'm I'm gonna bookmark that just in case you want it. Um. I don't want it, but I'm not. Well, I mean, I have the money right now. Just, uh, um. Now there's another um, microphone that's very similar to mine, and it looks a little bit different, but it's it's it, the same type as mine. And um, these take eighth inch jack. Um, oh my gosh, this is retarded. It says supported operating system is Windows XP 2098 Millennium and Vista. Th th this has absolutely nothing to do with software. It is completely an analog microphone that can be plugged into any device, even an old 40 year old tape recorder or whatever. Why, why are they? Why are they being dumb fucks and and like? Talking about software, I mean, because they want damn. the uh, the known people to go, well, hell yeah, you have the Windows, man. Yeah, so I was at Walmart. Uh, wait, was it Walmart? No, um, Best Buy. Uh, I was at Best Buy earlier, and they they've got, they've got like their little fucking Windows 8 packages you can buy. And I'm like, wow, who's want to buy that shit? 100 centimeter. How long I literally is have the, like Zan Biden, you know, well, two, you know, they both are literally would rather stick with XP than use anything else Windows. Like, they, they, they won't use Linux. They can't use Windows XP forever, you know that. I know that, but like, they pretty much, I guess, are going to use it until absolutely necessary to switch. And even then, I don't know how they're going to switch because they're not going to. I don't see them paying to buy a new operating system. That's exactly how they do Linux is free. And I was like, you know, if you learn to use Wine, you can you can game on Linux. It's not very hard. Well, there's also uh, Sedega. There's also other things that that. I know, but the thing that the, the go-to, like when I think of gaming on Linux or or, or using basically anything, you know, mm -hmm. Windows, EXEs, I think of Wine. And I'm not going to tell them 50,000 different things when they already don't know what wine is. I'm not going to go, oh, it's this, 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 and this. They don't even know what the first thing is. Well, the point is, when you tell them that there's several programs like that, it, it increases the likelihood that, that something will work on there. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, Brian was like, yeah, I'll buy Linux. And I was like, you don't have to buy it. It's free. He said something about, like, you know, I'd, I'd buy it and try it out. I'm like, dude, it's free. You there, don't have to fucking buy see, it. See, that's part of the problem right there. He, he's under the impression that he has to buy everything. Yeah. Oh, well, the, I mean, he's used Windows his whole life. The, the cord length on this other microphone is 40 inches, so it's a little bit more than 3 foot. And I'm going to look at the prices on here. Somebody is selling it for a penny, but then you have to pay $5 for shipping. Um, Do you use a pen or is that extra? Uh, you're looking at t it less than 10 bucks for this microphone. Well, that's pretty much uh, a good deal or whatever. And it's got a clip on it. You can clip it to your shirt and talk with it that way. Or clip it to whatever, you know, a, a lamp stand or something. That's pretty beakish. But anyway, get the fuck out of here, Ken. Stop, stop. Go away. You're not going to scratch. No. You're not going to scratch. Fucking please. All right. So anyway, dude, the the manipulative man. Well, yeah, I was gonna go to. I was yelling at the cat. I was about to say it, but all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish reading this part. You know where it says, you know, a, a man can be just as sneaky, passive aggressive, needy, and all that, uh, as women are accused of being, and perhaps more so. As any woman in love with a manipulative man uh, can tell you. It's not easy to get past his charm and and your guilt to place uh, to a place where you can see your relationship for what it is out of balance, extraordinarily stressful, emotionally exhausting, and potentially dangerous. 
This book is a groundbreaking prescription for dealing with the manipulative man, men in our society by using tests to help uh, by using tests to help women decide if they are involved with mama's boys, narcissists, sociopaths, and even psychopaths. Techniques for defining and setting boundaries with their men and tools to help women improve their relationships with manipulative men. In The Manipulative Man, acclaimed psychotherapist Dr. Dorothy McCoy shows readers how to identify the type of manipulative man they're involved with, deal with the issues of his behavior, uh, the, uh, deal with the issues his behavior provokes, and ultimately salvage salvage the relationship or move on. Well, I gotta say something. Um, I can fucking remember it. Um, what will they say? Uh, well, okay. When it starts naming all the uh, stereotype uh, names for you know the different types of men. First thing that makes me think of, as, as the list grows, you know, it continues. Uh, like, you know, it's like, mar, 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 it keeps popping out more. And what it, what it made me think of was, you know, okay, everyone has flaws and uh, all that. I mean, I, I assume that, uh, I assume that a feminist could, could admit that. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, yeah, you know, everyone has a, a flaw, uh, you know something. But anyway, the stereotypes, you know, oh, Miles Boy, my, my, all these, like, it makes me start thinking about these romance novels and, and, you know, the whole, you'll find the perfect man. And they look for someone who doesn't have a single flaw, which isn't possible. And then they wonder why they're alone, because everyone they get with isn't good enough. I know it's not what they're saying, but that's what that made me think of, hearing all those names. Because... I'm not really sure why. Um, well, I guess it'd be like, you know, honestly, a mama's boy. That is a, so, uh, a sociopath and a psychopath. Not, that's, that's hardcore shit. But a mama's boy, that's just, to me, is, is someone who's like, you know, Jesse. That's what I think of, I guess. Jesse or Matt. Someone's like, well, I gotta obey the rules of the roof, <laughs> and, and they're all like, worried about, you know, everything has to be all pristine and all that and it's like what's so wrong about that I mean if, if uh, they, I mean if anything they should be happy because that man's obedient to a woman right but I guess they're, they're mad because he's not obedient to them he's obedient to another woman which is uh, sparks the rivalry yeah, the rivalry between them mm -hmm. I guess yeah that's exactly it because my lawyer was telling me about the rivalry that exists between um between the mother and the girlfriend. Yeah. And this is when he was telling me that... Um, it's like playing tug of war. It's all, uh, it's all about who can control what. Yep. Yeah, so it's just like on the, the cover... Of, well, I don't know if it's on that cover, but on the cover, that, that's a picture of the movie, but man. It's... What is it? Uh, you know, stop the abuse. Ma, ma, ma. Regain control. Like... That, that's that's the I mean I'm glad they put it in order from you know least to greatest importance because you know the most important thing out of that is to gain control to get control back oh, oh yeah that's why you know um, uh, Esther Viller in her book uh, titled The Manipulated Man she talks about how you know a woman will basically cause the man to distance himself from his own family and you know, to please her. Yeah. And, uh, it happens. And, I mean, oh, man, it's, it's like a, it's, it's like a gauntlet you have to run. Not only do you have to run one in the, in the initial stages anyway in order to court the woman successfully without getting, uh, accused of sexual harassment or whatever, then afterward, you still have to jump hurdles and do all this stupid fucking tricks. Dude, you're gonna freaking love Stardust's most recent two videos. Dude, I mean, it's 
it, it's like he wants. To, it, it's like like he's getting frustrated. Fucking a, dude. He's starting to sound like us. It's it's. He's not even sounding like him right like his regular self anymore. He's starting to sound like us. Well, uh, I I can understand why he would because, um, yeah, it gets a little fucking frustrating. Yeah, and and that's the first time I ever heard him cuss. I literally, it, it does get frustrating hearing these fucking Maywalt This is all the time. A sample of what he's like of what he sounds like now. No, I'll just wait because uh, I'm about to get off here in a second. Dude, but, it, it's he's. I mean, like, dude, he. It's worth watching. I mean, like, you know how Barbarossa gets all pissed. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's starting to be like that now, and it's awesome, dude. I I told him in the video how I love it. And I'm gonna transcode the video, then I'm gonna upload it. Oh, exactly. We are going to do the reciprocity. I, I mentioned in the video to Stardusk about the guerrilla warfare that can go on. Yeah. And that's, you know, of friend-zoning women. And see, that's the thing. What we'll do is we'll give them what they say they want, which is space, but we'll give them more of it than what they ask for. Uh, we'll friend-zone them. The they never even asked for a specific amount. You're supposed to be the one that figures that out. Yep. Because what it comes down to is they don't want to make the decision. They want you to, but they can't tell you that. You're supposed to figure that out by yourself and and do it yourself with no like, you know, no no helping hand. And it's it's all it's all constantly proving yourself over and over. It's like you can never it's, it's never good enough. If you yourself once, that's no, because it, it's like okay, well, oh, phase one of the trials has has been completed. Initiate phase two. Meh. And Girl Writes What, her latest video is really good also. Um, That's pretty big. But anyway, dude, yeah. Are they petting it? Or, I mean, is that, you know. Yeah. Is that are. SLP for them to pet it? So, uh, so anyway, dude. So, like, you know, and if a woman gets all fucking pissed, it's like, we just be like, damn, I mean, like, at least you're not being raped. I mean, it could be worse, right? At least you're not being raped. Or at least you're not being made to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, it's like, look, I mean, you should be glad. Nobody's trying to sexually exploit you. Oh, I bought a, uh, I bought a thing that I'm going to, uh, I bought a thing I'm going to paint. But it's a, it's like a wood, it's a piece of thin wood. Mm -hmm. And it's shaped like the outline of a, of a beef child. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's, it's right now, it's just a colored wood, but I'm going to, like, make it look all cool. And I'm going to give it a really, a really big beak. But, um. Uh, a monkey beak, right? Yeah, monkey beak. Um, today I almost bought—I uh, almost was gonna make a prototype of our uh, our beak child shirts <laughs> because I was at a craft store and uh, they have like they have like shirts. That I wanted to get a hoodie, but they didn't have any hoodies there you could do. But uh, I might buy a blank, like a blank black or a dark darker colored hoodie because I think a dark shirt with with uh, brighter letters looks better than the opposite. Yeah. It's more, you know, it shows up easier. But, um, they, they had a black shirt, and they had these, um, you know how, uh, you know how a, a letterman jacket, how the, uh, the, the lettering is on it? It's like that, uh, I don't know what it's, it's like, it's like that hard thread kind of thing. Yeah, like, like what they make patches out of. Yeah, that stuff, um, I guess. I think it's embroidered. Yeah, okay, well. They have letters like that that you can buy, and you can just iron onto a shirt. Well, 
coincidentally, they had a really cool thing, but uh, I'll get to that. But I was picking out letters. The reason why I didn't do it is because it would have cost, a, a, like, $5 for the shirt, a dollar per letter, and uh, I wanted the lettering to say, it was going to be like this. It was going to have on the front, it was going to say, got beak, and on the back it was going to say, pet some. <laughs> then the, um, what I was going to buy, the cool thing I found was they had a, um, like, reflective, uh, you know that reflective material? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's on, like track jackets. Well, they have these, their patches that you can iron on made of that. They have one of a, uh, a, a beak print, like a beak paw print, you know? Mm hmm And I was like, oh, man, I should put that, like, I should have it, like, got beak and a question mark, and then right below it has the beak paw print, and on the back, across it, so when you're walking away, someone sees, like, got beak, and on the back, it's like, that's so. Hmm. But it would cost, like, it would cost, really, like, uh, you know, a dollar per letter, not to mention, uh, fucking, uh, the question mark, and the fucking goddamn reflective paw print was, like, five bucks. But, uh, I mean, we could get them made online, but uh, I kind of I kind of like making. Uh, I made I made Elliot a shirt like that with those iron-on letters. It's kind of fun to do. Well, you can always make your prototypes like that. Yeah, or we. I mean, we could just make uh, ones for me and you like that, just because they uh they because they don't they won't look great just because the lettering isn't. I don't really like the font, but the reason why I want the embroidering is because it's it's better than the. Uh, the other is basically like a screen print sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, I don't know, like, but you know that rubbery, like when you buy a shirt and it has like that, that, I don't, know, I don't even know what it is, but. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, the, the feeling, uh, well, it has letters like that, but I don't like those as much because they can be torn up easily. Yeah. I want the embroidery lettering, but the font itself isn't very good, but. The other thing about the embroidery letters is they're an inch and a half tall, which is the biggest size they had for well, lettering. You know which I, and I'm not, it's not like I'm writing a fucking book on there. I don't need small letters. I need like it to be visible, like, got beak. Monkey beak. Yeah, and it has to be visible, like, so people don't, you know, see, like, like, it, like if it, if it, well, you know, the letters were a certain size and they might be like, got bear, like, they might not be able to see what it says. <laughs> it's like, no, it, it clearly got beak. And then on the back, that's just one word. No, oh, there's a steel. There's there's a steel thing in my uh, in the sole of my boot. Oh man, I really need to get me a new boot. This thing's cracking open really bad. Yeah, I need to get new shoes. Uh, I found some shoes today. I wanted it. I didn't have enough money to get them. I have to fucking wait. Uh, fucking wait for the goddamn job to probably not call me back because I don't have a vagina. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, but uh, and you know that embroidery, uh, you know it's just like a big, it's just like some kind of sewing machine that does that. And I've seen at the gun show. This is like 16 years ago. They had an embroidery machine that would do it on hats, and you you use it straight up like a printer. Yeah. Like that's how you treat it because the dude had the image on there, and then it's like the software. It's like you just click print. And then the uh, embroidering machine had like I think sixteen colors of thread to use, and um, this is back in '96. Oh yeah, Chlora Breath. Oh God, what she, you do now? Yeah, uh, she was using like basically, she uses her age combined with. Uh, I can't she uses her age combined with her uh, body weight and gender to get out like everything. She's fucking making me. A, I get so pissed off because she makes me her fucking butler. What do you expect, Bondo? I mean, like, well, like, okay, like, there's like three other employees out on the sales floor that could have lifted this printer out of the shopping cart and all that. And I, I knew better. I, I, I was going to preemptively put it up on the shelf. And all that, but then I got busy with the frickin' convoy in the back. So I didn't get around to it. Well, guess what? Instead of snagging one of them three other employees out on the sales floor to go put it up for, no, she fucking tracks me down and has and expects me to deal with it. 
And I, I got so freaking pissed. I talked to one of the managers that, you know, it's like, I'm tired of this person. You know, I'm tired of... Why Bondo doing this? Well, yeah, I'm tired of Chlora Breath. Like, why, why does it have to be only me? I mean, and, and like, another thing. Oh, my God, I'm a, I'm a fucking... Stupid neighbors out there having a bonfire in the back of the fucking field, playing a whole goddamn block. And, uh, we'll see, like, what pissed me off is, for example, furniture and, and televisions. Nobody expects her to lift a finger, you know, for, you know, to handle the heavy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hey, she's 72, okay? 73. Uh, well, you know what? She's old. She can't do this stuff. Well, nobody expects her to lift a finger and all that, but I do expect her to do the small things that, you know, that, that like, that's, that's actually her job. And, um... Wait, like, Bonnie has to do the job? Well, like, for example, you know, when a customer wants something, I expect her to do her job and put a still shopping tag on there. You know, or, or you know, like, like, okay, the other day. You know what was worth my time the other day? Uh -huh. Um, supposedly, you know, what was supposedly totally worth my time was she come up to me and she says, Man, slave, uh, uh, you, you're really good with electronics and all this stuff. You're so technically inclined and all this other... She's trying to stroke my ego. She's trying to stroke my ego and all that. Well... So, and I was just pushing out a, you know, a cart from the back, and, uh, and then she snagged me. She says, oh, you're so good with technology and equipment and all that. I'm like, what do you need? She says, these customers need help. So I go up to the customers and ask them what they need. You know what they told me? Mm. They said all they need is a music CD so they can test that stereo. Well, that sounds cool. They asked where the music CDs are so they can test the stereo. And I just point them to where the CDs are. And that was somehow totally... You basically got the answer correct on the first try? I mean, like, I was expected to drop everything I was doing. And that only I could point out where the CDs were on the shelf. Even though it's Chlora Breath's job to, go, to be out there deal, and doing that stuff. I mean, I know, I know her arm's messed up and she's injured. But, like, she can just say, look, here's where they're at. But, no, it has to be me. And then, because she just loves to fucking degrade me and control me. And all this kind of fucking shit. And then, oh, it's just like, uh, the other week, you know. It's like, she, you know, a customer said they wanted a TV. And she's probably all panicking, thinking... Well, I'm a 73-year-old woman. I only weigh 80 pounds, and I can't lift that TV. And man, nobody expected her to do it. So she comes and gets me, and I'm already busy with a bunch of stuff. She comes and gets me. I go up to the customer and I ask them if they're ready to check out. The customer says, "No, we we just got here. We'll be here for a while and all that." And then I went up and got a still shopping tag and put it on the TV. Then I come back and mock. And I come to the back room and I mock the situation like you would have done. And I said, "Hey, guess what was totally worth my time? Did you know I got magic powers, which only allow you know? Did you know that only I can put a piece of paper on a television? I mean, like it, it's like some kind of really, you know, I, I got these magic powers and and you know that 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 nobody else has and and it enables only me to put tags on TVs. Um, did Big Chunk give you these powers? Oh yeah, Bronkindel Monk Alun Chindled. Thank Magic Rotten Soul. Magic Face McMonkey No As. Yeah, he's done the No Asian one. <laughs> no Asian one. Um, so do you think, uh, Gay Squirrel is going to, um, like, come around and, like, want to do more meetings and discuss more things with us? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't come around as often as he should. And when he does come around and you give him material, he doesn't study it, so. Yeah. Huh. Maybe, maybe what Gay Squirrel really wants is an acorn. <laughs> Well, 
I want to tell him he's going to have to earn his own name. He's going to have to take this stuff seriously. Oh, yeah, and I mentioned in the video to Stardust that we kind of got a bit of a think tank. I gave him a... a without going into a bunch of... De without going into any real detail, I just gave him... You know, I'm trying to be vague, you know, because other people are going to watch this. Yeah. But I was telling him, you know, our background and what got us into stuff and how we study movies and then we, uh... Yeah, I gotta go pet. All right, you need to go pet some. Yeah, you should. I agree. All right, so I'm going to put this up on the web and uh, I'm just going to do some video editing and, um... We gotta make some more videos, and because uh, this stuff's starting to get good now, and we got some good opportunities, we uh, we 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 lost two subscribers, and we gained three more, and then now we lost one, so we're we got 52 subscribers right now, and um, let, let's just refresh it. Oh, I gotta tell you something. I found a video a couple days ago, and um, I found it um, before. Stardust found it. It's uh, this woman, and uh, her name is Bine Binya, B Y E N I A, and she's got this video titled uh, "Why I Am No Longer a Feminist," and it's pretty good. I found it uh, two days ago, and Stardust found it today, and uh, so he's we're we're kind of up on his level, dude. We're, we're you know we're we're merging, and uh, and. Uh, yeah, and uh, so anyway, dude, I just want to give you an update really quick um, on this. going to refresh it. We, um, okay, we got 52 subscribers right now, and it's uh, uh, 42 minutes after midnight on uh, going into December 2nd, 2012. We got 1,983 video views, and I looked, and Dr. Claw, she's got a Facebook page, and... Uh, <clears throat> and like every one of her videos, I mean, she's got massive amounts of video views, and they all have almost entirely dislike. I mean, like, like all the voting activity on there, it's like more dislikes than likes. You know, it's only got a few likes and then a large amount of dislikes. And then ours, um, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, you should pet it, but, uh, you know, I can't well, get to it. All right, you should pet some? Yeah, pet some. All right, bye. Yes, yeah. All right. That was uh, my um, conversation with the disposable human doing. Uh, this is uh, for the Validation Warfare YouTube channel, and I am Manslave. And, uh, we'll have more content for you shortly. And until next time, uh, you can, uh, you can go pet some.